Hi, this is another video about managing huge egos where I use some of the mindset that I've gained in my career as a healer working with some people who either they had the huge egos, which is normally not the problem with my clients, or more commonly, they have to deal with people in their lives, in their careers that have massive egos. And the second part, which we're doing today, is about staying grounded in your reality and your values. So one thing that'll happen with people with massive egos a lot of times is that they will apply the criteria of their reality to yours, thereby making you the loser. And this could be anything. This could be, when are you going to get married? And maybe you don't even want to get married. Maybe you've been divorced three times already, or maybe you never intend to get married. If you don't stay grounded when that question comes at you and just say, I have no interest in getting married. Um, without staying grounded, you will be pulled by the groundedness and the magnetism of that person. And you will start feeling bad for not being married, even though you don't want to be married. For example... I had one client who had a very wealthy father and this client was a very talented guy and super accomplished in his field, but it wasn't necessarily a field that was going to earn him a lot of money. And this happens a lot of times with self-made men or women um, that are imposing their values on their children. And so with my coaching, and this has happened numerous times, actually, not just once in, in my 25 year career. Um, I told him, well, y y your dad says something like that, huh? you know, your dad says, well, how are you going to make your money? I made my money this way. How are you going to do it? And I told my client, say, I'm not necessarily going to do it. You already did. Either you're going to help me out. You're going to leave me money or you're going to help me in my life. Or you're not. And I'm going to be poor either way. But I'm following my path. And my path is not your path. And that's it. And I'm doing pretty well at what I'm doing. And if it doesn't make me as much money as you earned, well, so be it. Um, hopefully you'll leave me some when you go. Um, and actually, with when you're dealing with somebody who is egotistical but not tar totally narcissistic, sometimes these kinds of things will land and they will realize you do have a point. It's like if somebody said, you're not a virgin. And you'd be like, well, I hope not. <laughs> right? You know, if you go into their reality and feel guilty for not being a virgin, now depending on your age and your situation and your religion, whatever, most of us don't seek to be virgins and we don't mourn our, the loss of our virginity. And so, you know, just think of the ridiculousness. Most of you would be able to handle that one. Like virgin, I don't want to be a damn virgin. I haven't been a virgin for a long time, you know, but some people who have a lot of shame around sexuality, you know, like you've never been married then you must be a virgin, right? <laughs> no, 
Uh, your, your, your mathematics are not working here. Um, so the, the whole thing is you need to be grounded in what is important to you, how you judge yourself, and the fact that your own judgments are probably different than other people's. That's fine. You don't need to impose your judgments on them, and you do not need them imposing theirs on yours. But my point with this whole thing is that it's easy to sit here now and think, yeah, that would not be an issue for me. But the thing is, when we get into uh, a conversation with somebody that we feel has a higher status. And a lot of times we only feel they have a higher status because they act like it. They act uh, deserving of that status. And they have that kind of privilege um, where they feel that they can impose their values on you. And it's really important to know what your values are and how they are different and to give yourself a little credit and to kind of be able in a situation to be grounded to the extent that when people apply their judgments to you, that it doesn't send you spiraling into depression, self-doubt, and feeling not good enough. Because when you are ungrounded about these things, that's exactly what will happen. You will start applying other people's judgments to your life, even though they are not really your authentic judgments. They are not your authentic values. So it's really important to think about that. Next time you go visit grandma or your parents or the preacher or that old uh, teacher of yours or whoever's that authority figure in your life, um, or maybe it's the boss or maybe it's... Um, just somebody that you kind of, that has higher status and that every time they approach you, they approach you with some judgment, some questions that maybe don't even apply to who you are or what you want to accomplish in your life. So now the exercise for grounding, I recommend this anytime you're going to have an important conversation Anytime that you have a, a, a conversation on the phone, just do this. Let's say you're sitting. You're sitting in a chair. Feel the weight of your butt in the chair. Maybe your back up against the back of the chair. Feel the weight of your feet on the floor. Inhale. And exhale and feel the gravity kind of pulling you down. The easiest way to get grounded very quickly is just to notice the gravity holding you to earth. Inhale, exhale and relax. And that's it. If you do that before every important conversation, every important phone call especially, because phone calls are, are more important, or even texting, emailing, because it's already a less grounded form of communication. So being more grounded is that much more important. So try it out, but remember, Stay grounded in your reality and stay grounded in your values, no matter who you encounter. And tell me how it goes. Thank you.